And all of our gospel texts came from the Gospel of John, accompanied by the New Testament book, Acts of the Apostles, and that very last book in the Bible, Revelation. Beautiful, powerful readings, telling the story of Christ risen, Christ triumphant, giving us the news that because he lives, we too will live. Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end, the one who said it is finished on the cross, God's plan of salvation complete. The one who is making all things new, gathering heaven and earth to him. Where is Easter? How do we find Easter? You know the answer, right? Every day in our lives. Those Easter stories tell us that sometimes we'll see Jesus and sometimes we won't recognize him. But either way, it's our faith that trusts he is there and he is in our lives. And we know him. Today's readings, I don't know, it's, it could be difficult for a lector to read, and I had to read it carefully too. It's a bit circular. On our Wednesday Bible study, um, where we look um, at each week's Sunday's readings, Brenda Reichus, our parish nurse, summarized it this way. Love, love, love. <coughs> one, one, one. Oh, and sent, sent, sent. It's a pretty good summary. We are to love as one and we're sent to do this. But I did notice a few more words, some more important ones for us to notice. In fact, these were repeated even more. All right, and they are about knowing. K-N-O-W, no, 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 there's six no's, knowing. Knowing God um, sent Jesus, that um, there is this relationship that he wants us to know his son, and if we know his son, we know him. Also, in. There's even more ins. I'm in him, Jesus says. God's in me. I'm in you. You're in God. And it's important to pay attention to that especially little word. Because it doesn't just mean like we're connected. You know, we're connected on Facebook or we're associated. There isn't any other in like this. This is in our spirit, in our soul. And yes, in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our minds, in our body. Today, Cassie is united and in Christ. And that's the deepest knowing. Love, love, love. One, 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 send, 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 no, 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 in, in, in. At the Synod Assembly, Paul Strand, Nancy Christman, and I heard some very gifted storytellers. And we learned um, that we are created and we actually need stories to live by. Think about this for a minute. How many facts do you remember? I know there's always somebody that is able to do that. <laughs> For most of us, facts are a challenge, but we remember stories, don't we? Yeah. This is spiritual stuff. Parker Palmer, maybe you've read some of his books, an educator. He said, here's the deal. The human soul doesn't want to be advised or fixed or saved. It wants to be heard. It wants to be witnessed, to be seen and heard and companioned. You have a story. And one of your deepest needs is simply for that story to be heard. This is spiritual stuff. David I say, the creator and president of StoryCorps. This is an oral history project that has collected, listen to this, over 50,000 stories from just people like you and me across the country, they're archived at the Library of Congress. David Isay said, people get emotional when they hear story poor stories. And from what I can tell, it's because they're authentic. 
when we're surrounded by so much stuff that isn't. And you know, people are generous and honest when they tell these stories of courage and decency and regular life. And people get emotional when they hear these stories. And you know you're on the path of something special. You're kind of walking on holy ground. This is spiritual stuff. God's story. Our stories. So that we may be known. Known to one another. Known by God. For God to be known, to share a story. This is Jesus' prayer that last night with his disciples. This is a prayer for us. I get the chills every time I read this whole chapter, John 17, because this is a live prayer from Jesus for us. It's, not, it's yes, the past, and it's the disciples there, but he prays for those who will believe through the disciples' words. And it's the same for you and me if we use our words to tell stories about God. German pastor, theologian, and martyr of the 20th century, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, thought hard about our life together, and he wrote a book, Life Together. It is not only telling the story that is spiritual stuff, that is sacred, holy ground. It is listening and receiving that story. Even as we think about the Gospel of John, how does it begin? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word of God came to dwell with us in the flesh. And we hear that Word. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote this from his book, Life Together. The first service that one owes to others in the, fellow, in the fellowship consists in listening to them. Did you ever think of that as your first service in rendered in church to one another in this fellowship? Just as love to God begins with listening to his word, so the beginning of love for the brethren is learning to listen to them. It's, it is God's love for us that he not only gives us his word, but also lends us his ear. Many people are looking for an ear that will listen. He who can no longer listen to his brother will soon be no longer listening to God either. Wow. This is the beginning of the death of spiritual life. This is spiritual stuff. How can we be one? How can we be united with God in Christ? How can we know them and make them known through story? <coughs> That's what the whole Bible is, isn't it? But Lutherans, we have a stumbling block. We are shy people. And we create all kinds of reasons not to share our stories. And stories about God in our lives, about knowing the love of Christ. We know Christ and his love. We have these stories. I want to show you a picture of one of our presenters this um, at the Synod. Mike Mann, he's, he's from right here. He's from a congregation in the Minneapolis area Synod. What a gifted storyteller. And really the biggest thing that I and everybody there learned is that we do have stories to tell. And it's really pretty easy. And so, I'm going to have us do today what Mike had us all do. We are all going to tell the Band-Aid story. See, I knew kids. Everybody's got a Band-Aid story, right? Let's show that slide. There are some tips here, but, you know, the first group, I forgot to even announce that slide, and they did just fine. <laughs> I'm going to give you 30 seconds to sit and think about a band-aid story that rises up in your thoughts. Go. 30 seconds. Band-aid story. <coughs>
Now, just to help you, I'm going to tell a story that my friend and classmate from Luther Seminary, Deb Stellan, told me. And I'll tell you this. This is how you'll discover it works. As you tell the story, you get better at it because you get feedback. Like, I was giving Deb feedback about some things I thought were funny, interesting about her band-aid story. Um, so here goes. Uh, Deb, remember, when she was about six, she was riding a bicycle. And she doesn't remember how, but she fell off the bike, and she skinned her knee. And so she kind of played this up, if you know what I mean, kids. Like, you know, it was a little over dramatic. She went running into the house, wailing, Mom, I'm hurt. And uh, her mother came, and she got a can of back tea. Some of you remember that? <laughs> it's cold. She sprayed it all over that owie. And then she put a big band-aid over the knee. And Deb remembered, this thought came to her, she remembered that when she was six years old, she believed that once you got that band-aid on the owie, it would stop hurting. And so, with that thought, she kept that band-aid on all day, and it felt really good. And she kept it on the next day. And the next day. Well, and Deb learned something. As her owie didn't get better, but started to turn green and gooey. <laughs> yes, she learned, okay, it makes your owie better for a day, and then, or two, maybe. But you gotta take the band-aid off too, right? That's Deb's band-aid story. I remember all those details. So, what I'm gonna have you do, you get um, four minutes, and I know this is plenty of time. You're gonna sit with one other person and you'll each have time to tell your band-aid story to each other. So make sure that you're really listening because remember this is, this is important. Listen to the other because your assignment this week is gonna to be to tell that story and hopefully a story of fate too. So on your mark, get set, find somebody, go.
Musketeers, what was that? What'd they say? Yep. One, one for all, all for one, or something like all for one and one for all. Right. Isn't that our gospel? Christ is one for all. All for one, together. Great way to remember. We've got our stories to them. In the power of the Holy Spirit, let's do it this week. Amen.